Hi, my name is Mr. A, and this is a series on how to science fair. And this video in particular is about how to pick your science fair project. Now, um, just a quick disclaimer first, uh, I, I've been involved with the science fair program in my district for a long time. And a lot of this information is specific to my experiences in that district. So you wanna make sure that you check with the district where your science fair is happening um, because there might be a little difference here or there about how they run it. Um, but science is science. So I feel that a lot of the stuff that I'm covering in this video is gonna be good no matter what district you're in. So let's look into how to pick a good science fair topic. And picking a good science fair topic really might be the most important decision you make when you're uh, deciding to participate in a science fair. And the important thing is to realize that it's not really um, an issue of picking the right science fair project. It's about picking a project that's right for you. And what we're gonna do in this video is try to work through some questions to help you pick a topic that works for you for where you are uh, in your science fair journey, let's say. And um, really there's three questions that we're gonna run through in this video. Uh, what type of project do you wanna do? What topic do you wanna explore? And is this a me size project? And all three of those I'll talk about uh, in more detail uh, over the course of this video. Uh, the first one is the type of project. Now the type of project is sort of like the big classification, like what are you going to be doing? And making this decision is important because that's going to decide how you're going to be spending a lot of the rest of your time on the project. Uh, the main three categories in my district are experiments, inventions, and discoveries. And again, you want to check with your district to see which of these are, are going to be options for you to do. Uh, but uh, each of these as well, I'll, I'll summarize them each briefly in this video. Uh, but there'll be a video on each of these released uh, to give you a little bit more information in detail on each of these three project types. But let's take a quick survey. So the first type is the experiment. The experiment is what people think of sort of classically when you think of a science fair project. Um, you are trying to collect some information about what happens under a specific set of circumstances. Basically, what we do is we set up a really organized plan and we change one specific thing and then run the experiment again, and then change it a little bit more and run it again and change it a little bit more. And then the idea is that hopefully when we take a look at the data that we collected, we see some sort of pattern uh, where the change that we made has some sort of impact on the results that we see. And that's how we sort of figured out how science works. It's a, it's a pretty simplified approach compared to what an, uh, a scientist does for their day job. Uh, but at the heart, you're, you're basically doing the same idea. You're picking something, you're changing it in very specific ways, and then you're seeing what impact that has. And that can look a lot of different ways. It doesn't have to look like uh, test tubes and beakers and safety goggles. Uh, for a good science fair project, you can do something on sports. You can say, hey, uh, what's the best angle to punt a football at to see that it, you know, how far we can make it go? Um, you can have projects with your pets. Uh, do my fish like one type of food more than the other type of food? Um, you can even do it with baking. You can say, hey, what's the maximum number of chocolate chips that I can cram into this recipe without the cookie just absolutely falling apart when I try to pick it up? So there's really no limit to the uh, ideas that you can put forth when you're trying to do an experiment. And uh, yeah, if you're doing it right, you should be having fun at the same time. Now, uh, what's great about an experiment, it's, it's really hands-on. And if you pick the right project, it can be a lot of fun collecting the data. And, and sometimes it's really surprising to see what you end up with. Um, the not so great thing about science fair projects is sometimes uh, you're surprised also about what you end up with, maybe not in the way that you were hoping. Uh, maybe the experiment doesn't give you the results that you want. We don't control everything about nature and, and uh, you might think the project's gonna go one way, but you get the results and you're like, oh, this, this didn't work out at all. Uh, but that's okay because what we're looking for in a science fair project is for you to try to follow the steps that a scientist would. And uh, even real scientists finish their projects sometimes and don't get the results they expect. So no one would expect that you're going to get everything perfectly uh, the way you think you're going to either. And next type of uh, project that you could do is what's called the invention. And this is sort of like the engineering side of things. You're, you're trying to look at a problem and you're looking to try to solve that problem with your invention. And in the course of completing your science fair project in the invention category, you would be looking to 
make simpler versions of your device and see how it works. And then ideally you revise it and try it again. And then you revise it and try it again. Uh, so you make simpler versions of your idea, trying to get it to work better and better and better as you go through the engineering design cycle. Now, there are a bunch of different ways that you could do inventions as well. Let's kick, stick with the same three categories that we had uh, for the experiments. Maybe instead of doing an experiment with football, you'd rather do an invention. Uh, maybe you come off the, the field and your, your football cleats are always uh, you know, full of mud and your parents don't want them in the car with all that mud. Uh, is there a device that you can make that could easily clean the mud off of the bottom of cleats? Uh, maybe you're gonna be going on vacation and you wanna make sure your fish get fed every day. Uh, is there a way that you can automatically feed them each day with some sort of device? And even in the context of cooking, uh, creating a recipe from scratch is kind of an invention in and of itself. Can you uh, put ingredients together in a way that makes a, a healthy, tasty cookie? All these are attempting to use uh, what you know uh, about science and, and, and building things to try to make an invention to solve some sort of problem. Now, what makes inventions a great project to pick? Well, they're fantastic if you like to be really, really hands-on and uh, enjoy seeing the results of your actions come to some sort of beneficial consequence. It, it's awesome when you have an idea in your brain and you, you put it together and you keep on tweaking it and revising it, and then you end up with something that actually works to fix the problem that you were hoping to fix. Um, what's not so great about them is that sometimes uh, even the best laid plans uh, don't, don't work out like you were hoping they would. Uh, it can take a lot of tries to get things to work out, and you, you might run out of time before you really get where you want to be, or it might just be a, a problem that doesn't quite work uh, with the solution that you were thinking about. And again, don't let this uh, detract you from deciding that you might want to try an invention. It, it's okay to try to build something, to take good notes on your progress uh, and, and still come up short. That's the, the engineers experience this all the time. So when you're doing your science fair project, recognize that your results may not end up where you think they're going to, but that doesn't mean that it was a bad project. Um, now, the third type of category, and again, this is conditional based on where you are, are doing your, your project, but in my district, we call it a discovery project, uh, which is sort of like a research project, really is what it comes down to. Sometimes there's ideas that are really, really interesting, uh, but don't lend themselves well to an invention and don't lend themselves well to an experiment. I'm thinking maybe dinosaurs. Um, dinosaurs you can't really do experiments with dinosaurs because they're not here anymore, at least on the filming of this video. And uh, inventions with dinosaurs, again, you're trying to solve a problem with dinosaurs, but if dinosaurs aren't around, I'm not really sure what kind of invention you can make that's going to help you with dinosaurs if they don't exist right now. So, um, but it's still awesome to learn about dinosaurs. And by learning about dinosaurs, you learn more about nature and the way the world was. And uh, that has implications for the way the world is now. So there's, there's value in that as well. So that's where the discovery project comes in. And uh, these are great for topics that are really interesting that you want to learn more about, but don't really fit in the invention category or the experiment category. And uh, the focus in my district when we do a discovery project is not only do you want to learn more about the topic, but then you want to communicate it to the people looking at your project in, in, in a clear way um, and an exciting way. Usually we, we encourage you to do some sort of visual aid to go along with it to help communicate some of the stuff that you found out. So yeah, it can be a, a bit more creative in that regards too, if you like that kind of stuff, uh, arts and crafts. Uh, exa other examples of discovery projects instead of dinosaurs could be, uh, hey, what are the other planets in the solar system like compared to Earth? Uh, what is it about a cheetah that makes it able to run so fast? Or how do electric cars compare to gasoline cars? Any of those topics, you'll learn more about the science and the engineering behind them and uh, great opportunities to expand your knowledge in topics that you're interested in. Uh, what's great about a discovery project? Hey, th there's no limit to the topics that you can choose uh, in a discovery project. You can look at things that are in the past. You can think about things that are in the future. Uh, you can look about things that are too big, too dangerous, too expensive, whatever, the, the, the sky's the limit uh, in terms of picking a project for uh, a discovery uh, project. Um, what's not so great, uh, again, it's not as hands-on as the other projects. You're not gonna be building something. You're not going, well, you, you might build a visual aid to go along with it, but you're not gonna be 
uh, you know, inventing something new, you're not going to be conducting an experiment. And some kids really enjoy that part of the science fair. Uh, but if you don't mind doing a little extra reading and maybe a little extra writing, then uh, you have an opportunity to, to study up on something that you're really, really interested in. So when you're looking at your type of project, and again, you've got inventions, you've got experiments, and you've got discoveries, um, you want to think about what you want to study and then think about how that fits in with the type of project that you want to do. Uh, we're going to talk next about how to pick your topic that you're actually studying. Uh, but if you want to learn more about any of the three types of projects, the inventions, the experiments, and the discoveries, um, I'm going to be posting three other videos where I'll go into those in a little more detail so you can uh, learn a little bit more about what's involved in each of those if you want to think about it a little more before settling exactly on which of those you want to pick. So the project topic is the next aspect of things. And that's really what, what is it that you're going to be spending your time uh, looking into. And the, the topic is probably more important than the actual type of project. You know, whether or not you're choosing an invention, an experiment, or a discovery, you always want to be picking a, a project that's interesting to you. You don't want to be stuck doing a, a boring project for a month or two. And that's where this question really comes into play in making sure you're setting yourself up for a successful project. And uh, when, when I talk with students uh, who, are, who are looking to get started in the science fair and they're and they want to know, well, what, what should I do? I've never done one before. And the question I always, always, always ask them is, if you had 45 minutes of free time, no homework, no chores, uh, just your time to spend however you want to do, what would you be doing? And whatever the answer to that question is, is probably the best pick to try to focus on picking a science fair topic. Because if you can pick a topic that aligns with something you'd be interested in doing anyway, then it's not going to feel like a chore when you're doing a science fair project about it. Uh, you know, as they say, do what you love and you, you never work a day in your life. So um, now, where does that actually come into play? Well, again, your passions can become projects. You just want to think about uh, how they fit into the different project types. Uh, if you're saying like, hey, I, I wonder what would happen if that might be leading you in the direction of an experiment. Uh, if you have something that you enjoy doing, but you're like, oh, man, I really think I could do this better, uh, that could be leading you in the direction of an invention. Uh, and if you have something that you enjoy looking into and you just want to learn everything you can about it, that might be leading you in the direction of a discovery. Uh, but again, there's, there's lots of different ways to end up on deciding on the topic that you want to study. And, and you might have trouble sort of narrowing it down a little bit. Um, one good approach is to talk to your science teacher, um, and they might be able to help you focus some of your interests into a project that's realistic for you. Uh, also, not on the screen, but a, a really, really good place to look as well is your, is your library, either in your school or in your community. They probably have a lot of books in the kids section about different science topics and uh, even maybe some books on scientific experiments uh, and science fairs. And that might give you some ideas of where you want to go with the uh, topic that you're going to pick. And then finally, let, let's say that you've uh, picked the type of project you want to do, whether it's an invention, a discovery, or experiment, and you've picked the topic that you want to study. Uh, you want to make sure before you get started, um, the, the question I, I'd like you to ask yourself is, is this a me-sized project? Uh, and me-sized means different things. Uh, me-sized for me is going to be different than me sized for you. So you want to make sure that you pick a project that's appropriate for where you are right now. It's better to pick an easier project uh, and get it done than, than to really you know, shoot for the moon and, and, and get three weeks into it and realize I'm, uh, yeah, I'm never going to be able to get this done and just quit. Um, you want to be careful of picking like super crazy, amazing ideas. Uh, but, if they're really outside your ability to get it done, that's not gonna be a good experience for you. So, and especially if this is your first science fair, uh, you know, maybe be a little more uh, conservative about what you pick. Uh, don't go too, too crazy. It, you, you just wanna get used to the idea of, of completing a science fair project. Once you get your first one done, you'll have that experience under your belt. And then next time you do a science fair project, you can be a little bit more ambitious. Uh, in, in terms of helping you figure out whether or not your project is a, is a me-sized project, here's a couple other questions you might want to ask yourself. Uh, do you have the supplies you need to make your idea work? 
uh, do you have access to that kind of stuff uh, in your house or, or easily able to get to? Uh, maybe you want to do something with horses and that's fantastic. But if you, you know, if you don't live near a farm and you don't know anybody who can get you to his horses to work with, you know, probably not going to be the best project for you to pick at this time. Um, is there enough time to get your project done? Uh, are you going to be able to get your data collected? Uh, and this sort of has two aspects of it uh, in terms of do you physically have the time to get it done for what you want to do in your own schedule? Uh, and then also looking at the environment that you're in right now, is it sort of, is it the right time to do that project? Uh, if it's January or February, which is kind of classic science fair season, you, you may not be able to get outside a lot um, if the weather's really cold. So uh, you, you, you want to think about what is the time like for yourself? What is the time like in, in the general calendar? And does it fit with what kind of project you want to do? Also, um, if you're going to need help to get the project done, you want to think about, are, are you going to have that help available? It, it's okay to, to pick a project uh, that maybe requires some adult assistance. You want to make sure you note that when you do the project, how you got help from the adult. Um, but that's okay. I mean, sometimes you need, uh, and sometimes you should have an adult to help you out. Um, but you want to make sure that that uh, help is going to be available. You know, maybe, um, you know, Aunt Susie works at a veterinary office and uh, you might have a great idea for the kind of project she can help you with, but you got to check with her first and make sure she has time to help you out. Um, if any of those questions uh, is a no, you may want to rethink the, the focus of your science fair project. That doesn't mean you have to scrap it entirely, but you may want to think about, well, you know, if this isn't realistic for where we are right now, uh, maybe can I pick a more me-sized project that I would have a chance to get done more successfully? Um, and there we go. That's the big three. Uh, first, uh, what kind of project, what type of project do you want to do? Is it going to be an experiment? Is it going to be an invention? Is it going to be a discovery? Secondly, within that framework, uh, what kind of thing do you want to actually study? And then finally, is this project something that's reasonable for you to get done with where you are right now? If you can answer those three sets of uh, questions successfully, um, you're on the road to having a really, really good experience with your science fair project. All right. Hey, well, that wraps us up. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Again, remember, if you want to learn more about uh, experiments, if you want to learn more about inventions or discoveries, uh, there's going to be separate videos for each of those. You can take a look at them and maybe help you get some more ideas of where you want to go. And uh, I'm excited that you're thinking about doing a science fair project. And good luck with your efforts. It's a, it's a fantastic experience. Uh, it can be a, a new challenge uh, every time you do it. And uh, you always come away um, a little smarter about science and engineering as a result. Good luck.